Thank you very much for the invitation to address the Sydney Institute this evening. It's a privilege to speak among such distinguished guests. Mainland Australia has wall-to-wall -wall Labor governments. Things feel different already. The Opera House was not lit up for the King's coronation. Landmark stamp duty reforms are already being wound back. And race, something we've tried to leave behind as a society, is now at the centre of today's most significant national debate. The effects of a left-wing Labor government are already being felt. However, at the outset, I think it's important to note we've been in this position before. Thanks to the internet uh, for this information, because I was only five at the time, but by 2007, Labor had won a fourth term in New South Wales and Queensland, a third term in Victoria and WA, and Kevin Rudd had just ousted the venerable John Howard. There was not a single Liberal government in the country. We have been in this position before, and we have recovered. But we need to be presenting a renewed vision for our nation, one that takes the lessons of the past, the ever-present values of our party, and adapts to the context of today. But before we plot our path out of opposition, we need to start by understanding where we are. Federally, we lost the urban and female voters, but at a state level, we lost the young people. The adage that people get more conservative as they get older is wrong. When millennials started voting, 35% of them voted for the Liberal Party. Now that's just 26%. Less than one in four people under the age of 40 voted for the coalition during the federal election. And the critical problem is that this cohort of people, my generation, our generation, is only growing in political power. Now they make up an equal proportion of voters as baby boomers. And in key seats where we suffered double digit swings at the state election, they made up half of our voters. So to answer the question of what is to be done to save the Liberal Party, we must first decipher why millennials and Gen Z are abandoning us at such an alarming rate never before seen. One explanation is that people under 35 have never lived through a recession. For their whole adult life, for the last decade, they've known an unemployment rate of 5.4%, interest rates of 2.3%, and inflation of 1.5%. Now, the irony is, they are the very beneficiaries of the Liberal Party that they despise. So we must reframe our message to cut through in a digital world and meet young people where they're at. That might include looking at new platforms like TikTok or collaborating with influencers. But in this space, Labor is well and truly ahead. Friendly Geordies is an influencer and entertainer who's amassed 211 million views on YouTube and millions of followers across Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. I can name at least a dozen of my friends that are now members of the Labor Party, thanks to Friendly Geordie's evangelism. But the deeper challenge we need to confront as a party is that it's not just the Liberal Party that's out of style. Young people have actually been captured by anti-liberal ideas. And that is the biggest challenge we face. It can't be solved by spending more money on Facebook ads or recruiting more diverse candidates. We actually need to engage in the battle of ideas. Ultimately, liberalism is predicated on two core ideas, freedom and aspiration. For young people, both of these are under attack. Economically, from a person's first paycheck, freedom is robbed. At a minimum, 10.5% of one's wage is carved out and stored in the coffers of big super funds. Mediocre financiers are professionals in slicing and dicing other people's money just to clip a little bit of themselves to deliver barely above market returns. That's money that should be going towards people's first home. The cultural forces pushing against freedom are even more profound. On the one hand, there's this insistence by young people that distinctions associated with inherited identity, be that differences between sexes, classes, religions, or lifestyle, should be rejected in the interest of equality. But on the other hand, young people are being reduced to those very things that the left claims means nothing. The new left is trying to resurrect the class war that Menzies crusaded against by defining people in terms of these immutable personal attributes.
The female uprising against Scott Morrison stemmed from his portrayal as a straight white male out of touch with minorities and a misogynist towards women. The truth was irrelevant. He was a straight white male. And for Gen Z and millennials, that was enough. For young people, it leaves us feeling like we are chained and confined to our arbitrary inherited identity. The new form of identity politics that young people are immersed in also gives rise to a culture of victimhood. It's, we no longer think, what can I offer to my nation? It's what can a government give to me? And the natural result of all of this is a politics of envy, where the role of the government is to redistribute the wealth of the privileged few to the masses of victims. This is unfortunately at odds with the liberal vision of Australia. While the left is the politics of envy, liberalism is the politics of aspiration. We need to call young people, my generation, to a higher and better way of living, one where we seek to give and not to take. We all know that it's actually the struggles of life, the fight for existence and progress, that is what brings out the best in people and leads to a nation defined by its fierce independence of spirit matched with a brave responsibility. And out of this struggle grows a people of strength and endurance. But taking on this mantle of responsibility requires young people to be aspirational and not resign themselves to a state of victimhood. That means young people must strive for something higher than themselves. And it begins with striving after home ownership. By the age of 30, 65% of baby boomers own their own home. For millennials, that's just 35%. Nearly, more concerningly, nearly 60% of first home buyers receive an average of $100,000 from their parents to help with their first home. Now, if home ownership is dependent on your parents' wealth and their wealth is dependent on their home ownership, I foresee us creating a class of landed gentry where wealth is totally based on your inheritance and hereditary privilege. And this will kill aspiration forever. This is not to say that home ownership shouldn't be difficult. In his Forgotten People's speeches, Menzies argued that home ownership is the concrete expression of the habits of frugality and saving. It's actually the struggle of attaining one's own home that creates the instinct of responsibility and pride in its owners. But young people must be encouraged to take this road of frugality and feel as though it is actually possible. And the reality is that housing supply has consistently undershot demand for decades. So we can spend all the money we want on social media and we can find the best candidates in the country, but young people won't vote for us because they don't agree with our values anymore. Freedom and aspiration, those are alien concepts for them. But as conservatives, we believe human nature doesn't change. So as I engage with my friends, I do see bright spots. 60% of young people want to own their own business. They want to be entrepreneurs. They want to build a life for themselves. The Liberal Party needs to capture the entrepreneurial spirit of young people and use that as a way to steer them back to the Liberal Party. Ultimately, liberalism is a message of hope for young people. To give them a renewed faith in their capacity for freedom and aspiration is a good thing when all they are hearing from our current culture is that they're a victim. We need to build policy that actually taps into those core pillars of freedom and aspiration and offers young people a better and a distinct vision for life. This quote by Sir Robert Menzies is as true of the Liberal Party today as it was when he said it. We have suffered far too much from people who have no political convictions beyond a more or less genteel adherence to our side of politics. That kind of adherence is worthless. We must have people who believe in things and who are prepared to go out and struggle to make their beliefs universal. As liberals, we need to define what liberal values actually are. Then we must go out and we must prosecute the case, particularly among young people, because I will tell you, if I was not crazy enough to read Friedrich Hayek at 14 years old, I would never have found the Liberal Party. I would have been sucked into the digital echo chamber of leftism that young people are subject to, and I would not be here today.
So the responsibility is on all of us to engage in the cultural battle, to fight for freedom, to fight for aspiration, because human nature does not change. It resonated with the people in Robert Menzies' day and it will resonate with young people today, but we need to take up that mantle of responsibility. Thank you.